This is Sarnia Lampton Daily for Tuesday, May 5th. Good evening, I'm Terry Doyle. There has been another death in the region as a result of COVID-19. A resident of Vision Nursing Home has passed away. This marks the 15th person in the region to lose their life to the virus. It is the first death reported in Sarnia Lampton due to COVID-19 since April 20th. Seven of the 15 deaths were in seniors facilities with the others from Landmark Village. Overall, 192 positive cases have been reported in Sarnia Lampton, up three from Monday's update. One more person is listed as recovered from the virus. More than 3,000 test results have come in, with 94% of those coming back negative. Elsewhere tonight, many organizations have made, had to make changes for either the current time or plans moving forward. That includes the Victoria Playhouse of Petrolia. Co-artistic director David Hogan joins me now from Petrolia. And uh, David, a uh, decision has been made regarding the 2020 season at the VPP. Fill us in. Uh, what's the plan going forward? So a hard decision been made, and I guess most theaters around the world are making decisions like ours. Uh, we were hoping just to peel away the 2020 season, hoping that maybe one part of, you know, time will say, okay, we can open and gather. And as we're watching and listening to our, our government and, and taking advice from the scientists and the people that know more, it doesn't look like we'll be able to put on a season in the summer, gather with 400 people. So we made a positive decision. We decided to pick up these six shows and move them to next year. So the 2020 season is now going to be the 2021. I've got to think that's a challenge because that idea you said about peeling back, which some organizations might be able to do that, but I'm sure that's tough because of the preparation that has to go in to every, uh, every performance, every act, and keeping the actors on standby, basically. I've got to think it was, as you said, I'm sure there was a little tug of war deciding which way to go with this, but at the end of the day, had to make this decision. Only because we wanted, we were being so optimistic. We love what we do here at the VPP. We love our audiences and we just, we wanted to do it. Uh, these ticket sales were going like gangbusters. It was going to be a, an incredible season. So we, we were keeping optimistic. Yes, the thing that we do differently than um, other theaters, some theaters are in repertoire, you know, like Stratford and Shaw and, and Charlottetown. Uh, they start in February, March, go all the way to the end of September, beginning of October and November. Um, everybody's there. Uh, we produce show by show. So the first show in April, then in May, then in June. And um, just the actors come in just for their shows. So we were hoping that maybe by August we could do the August show. Um, so And actors weren't surprised. So yes, they were on standby, but no one was surprised to get the call. They only want to work where it's safe. They only want to invite people to the theater when it's safe to do so. No one's surprised. Everyone's sad, but we're optimistic and, and 2021 is going to be a gangbuster year. And speaking of which, so let's uh, fast forward. The 2020 lineup is now the 2021 lineup, and I hear indeed it's a great lineup coming up. So we're going to do exactly what we did or plan to do this year. So uh, May will be the Roaring Twenties. Then we're going to open on Golden Pond with Michael Learned, our friend Michael from Los Angeles, and Hal Linden. They're going to play uh, Ethel and, and Norm, which is awesome. Uh, then we're going to uh, move to uh, Dynamic Duels, which is a duet show with um, Jenny Walls and Adam Brew, written by David Rogers, conceived and written. It's very, very funny. And then that will just go in the, the July section. And then the August is the Divine Women, Irish Eyes. And then we're going to finish with uh, Wingfield, Lost and Found. So the exact same months. And I've got to think the feedback from the actors and everyone involved was, as you said, disappointed. But hey, excited to know that, hey, this is going to just continue on. Just uh, put everything on pause for a little bit. And they were just as invested as we, the producers here, all the crew, everyone here at the VPP. They were just as excited. So yes. Um, they're very sad, right? They're, it's not like as if we um, didn't produce this show and then they're off to going to do another show. No one's working right now, obviously. Um, so yes, very excited. They loved the shows that they were participating in. They were gravely sad, understandably, and can't wait to join us in 2021. 
Take me through, and you know, obviously your connections in the industry, and you touched on it. That's got to be a challenge for everyone because they're used to being be able to perform in front of live audiences and uh, you know having things lined up. And now with everything on hold, that's got to be a challenge just because you know there's in some cases the financial side to it in terms of people's uh, livelihood, but just in general that mental side of it as well of not being able to do it, it's got to be a challenge for everyone. I've got to think everyone's sort of leaning on each other right now for support. And uh, all these beautiful Zoom parties happen, these uh, um, cabarets, uh, singing songs are all coming. They're, they're spinning off because people need to connect together in companies. The Stratford Festival are showing um, uh, Shakespeare plays that they've already filmed, which is very excited. We have a, a series called Stay Inspired and you join us twice a week and we uh, bring up something from our archives and we get an actor to introduce it. Uh, coming up uh, tomorrow is um, our friend Alex Baer. Uh, and he's gonna talk about the, the show, the song that in, and why it's inspiring and here it is. So we're spinning it out, we're trying to keep them connected to the Victoria Playhouse. Actors, if you're not working, you usually are waiting on tables or you're doing a side job. And unfortunately, there's no side jobs. So really there is no work. Um, and actors are really kind of social beings, or most actors are anyway. Um, there are there are those who aren't. So um, they need that connection. They need, need uh, the human uh, connection. And when you get in front of an audience, it's just so, it's a dialogue and it's so exciting. And it's sad to think that all this work that they were planning, all the people working on On Golden Pond, Ernest's great play, and then, then it's not gonna happen. And, and they couldn't wait to share the story, share the jokes, um, go through the journey, right? And that's the same with all the, all, the, all the plays, all the stories. So it's hard, yes, it's hard. Let's spin it the other way. The fact that Victoria Playhouse over the years has become, especially in those summer months, a, a hub of activity in Petrolia, and it branches out, of course, throughout southwestern Ontario. And I'm sure the entire team there must be proud of the way it's, uh, you know, continues to grow and continues to uh, be a hub. And as we said, it'll be a, a pause right now, but in 2021, be a hub of activity once again. Restaurants and people visiting the area. I've got to think that's where the team is really proud of uh, how things continue on with the Victoria Playhouse. 100%. And uh, we, uh, Mayor Loosely, Brad Loosely, is doing a fantastic job. He's keeping us all together. Um, my boss, this, uh, the general manager, as it were, uh, for this department, Larissa Ellsworth, is leading us. She's keeping us uh, uh, up and uh, excited about the prospects. She's reaching out to the audiences. She's reaching out to anybody who was going to work here. And she's keeping a great great positive spin and that that's my that's that's who I am actually and I always look optimistically and and I I always try to figure out okay what is this lesson what are we learning today in order for us to spring into tomorrow be right now and figure it out so that the joy and the uh, the energy and, and and the education that we get from times day to day we can we can uh, ignite and, and share tomorrow. So we're gonna pause, we're gonna figure this out. We're gonna, we're gonna just come back again, Busters. The uh, economy's gonna grow with us. We're gonna bring back the 40 plus thousand people to the Victoria Playhouse and the restaurants will be booming and, and uh, Lambton County will, will thrive again. Yes, they will. Before we let you go, in case people missed it, you mentioned uh, coming up tomorrow. Some people can uh, join virtually tomorrow. Just uh, give us a recap on that one more time. Stay inspired. Follow us on Facebook, the VPP, uh, and twice a week, three times a week, uh, we have different actors. Alex Berg is going to say, stay inspired, and he's going to share something from like, 2017. Uh, and, uh, and then we have the whole, we've been doing it since we've been in isolation, so there, all the videos are there, and we're going to roll it out and, and, and keep having the fun. Well, David, we appreciate the update. We're, uh, we sure. saw the lineup. We saw it was very exciting for 2020. We're just going to scratch out the zero at the end, put a one right there, and we'll be ready to go for uh, 2021. So to you, everyone there, all the best, and we'll catch up again soon. And if anybody has any questions, may I say? Go for it. Call, email us at the box office at petrolia.ca. It's a simple box office at petrolia.ca. We'll answer all your questions, any concerns, that's the quickest way to get a hold of us because the, obviously the theater is closed. Hopefully we'll open late August, beginning of September.
box office at Petrolia.ca. We've got it there. David, all the best. Thank you. Be safe. Be healthy. There's David Hogan joining us from Petrolia Playhouse and Petrolia. More to come on Sarnia Lampton Daily on your TV. Welcome back to Sarnia Lampton Daily. Well, as we know, many industries in this area have to do things a little bit differently right now. And let's check in with someone who certainly knows the real estate market in Sarnia Lampton. Sean Ryan from EXP Realty joins me now. And Sean, uh, let's talk about how things are done right now in real estate. Obviously, I'm sure you're used to a lot of face-to-face -face meetings and going into homes. Uh, right now, we've been doing things a little differently, I'm sure, in our day-to-day -day lives. And take me through how things go in the real estate market right now. Yeah, so Terry, the real estate market uh, through this whole situation has still been moving pretty good for the most part. Um, you know, yeah, things are done a little bit differently in that sense too. So we're not seeing as many uh, tire kickers out there. So the buyers that are out there are more serious, more of a essential move. Uh, we're really seeing a lot of the first time home buyers drive the market. So really what we're seeing is anything 400,000 and under, we're still multiple offers on almost all of those properties, which is awesome. Uh, so kind of how we're doing things a little bit differently is normally I just show you the house, we do an open house, but now we're doing more virtual walkthroughs. So a lot of times I'll grab my phone just like this and I'll, and I'll, I'll log in on a video chat through like Messenger or Skype or Zoom and I'll walk you through the house this way sometimes. And then you go, like, yeah, it's a good house. I'm like, okay, let's get you out to see the house. And then obviously we have uh, recommendations from the real estate board, government of Canada that we're following to make sure that it's done safely one person in the house at the time, you know, only the same from the same household. We're trying to limit no children in the houses and uh, just working through it. And I guess as you kind of showed there, it's probably where maybe skip the browsing stage for lack of a better term, where, as you said, I'll show you on video, either, you know, live on video, for example, or some pre-made videos to, you know, make sure you're interested. And then if you're sort of like that next level of interest, then we'll look at actually going in person. Yeah, hundred percent. Right. So we got rid of the window shoppers really for the most part. So like generally a house, let's say under 300,000 and I have 20 showings lined up on it. We're only seeing maybe 10, but we're seeing, you know, still five of those people put offers in. So it certainly makes things interesting. I know for yourself, you've been doing a lot of video stuff online for a while. I've got to think this has probably been right up your alley a little bit where it's saying, Hey, I'm going to take advantage of this video technology because we have to right now. 100% Terry. So like we're pricing people's homes out virtually right now, like crazy. And really, you know, those people that want to sell when things normalize or when the new normal become kicks in, we're able to give them a, like a pretty accurate price via a video conversation on their house. I've been in most properties I've sold in the last 15 years and we give them, Hey, this is what it's worth. Uh, here's a repair list and recommendations we should do. So when, you know, things do normalize and you're ready to go on the market, you're ready to rock and roll. In general, what are we seeing in terms of the local real estate market right now? So year to date, we're pretty on par with last year. So it was kind of interesting. So like, let's go back to March here a little bit. So March was above 2020 March was better than 2019 March. We were up by about two or three units. So not a whole lot, but considering that was, you know, the beginning of COVID, that's pretty good. April, April was down by about, you know, about 40% roughly. And, but it was funny, the first half of April was where we saw a lot of the drop happen, but the second half of April was pretty much on par with last year. And then, well, May, May is May, but like it's only a weekend and I've been in competing offers three times. Wow, so, so still, still, so still pretty busy. I guess some people would wonder sort of, I guess for lack of a better term, where are the buyers coming from? Because uh, you wonder if some people have sort of decided, okay, I was thinking of listing, but I'm gonna stay put right now. Where are sort of the, the buyers and sellers in general coming from? So the big thing right now is the first time home buyers are really driving the market. What normally really does drive the market is the first time home buyers in that lower price range. You know, let's say 400 under in Sarnia Lambton. So those people have no house to sell. They're probably renting. Uh, or relocating into Sarni, let's say, and those ones are really driving the market. So the luxury market, let's say like the higher end stuff, isn't selling as well. But you know what's selling really well right now? New homes, because we already sold those off of Blueprints in virtually all this time for the most part. Yeah, so that doesn't change things a whole lot. What's the talk right now in the market when it comes to mortgage rates? Because we know interest rates have come down and the Bank of Canada is always talking about what they're going to do. What sort of the talk as that relates to real estate? So what I'm encouraging any buyer to do right now uh, to your question is that's going to be wanting to buy when things go back to normal 
small-ish is become a research buyer, get those pre-approvals locked in. Uh, we could do that all virtually remotely with the banks and because they're the lowest they've been in a long time. And the nice thing is a lot of banks, I've seen some banks they're locking in for up to 130 days right now. Also a great time to refi, pull that money out if you want to as well, because rates are low, take advantage of them. Yeah, it does sound like that. Certainly, I've got to think that's where your first time home buyers, if they were not sure whether or not they could take the plunge, this is probably the time where they're saying, okay, I've got to take another look at that. Is that pretty much how it works, Sean? 100%. Like you look at like the cost of rent right now, like you're on average 1500 bucks a month for something decent right now. Uh, you could buy a $300,000 home with that price. Yeah, so it's definitely something to consider. Overall, you know, we're talking about what's gone on during the pandemic, but you know, we've seen real estate, we hear about it in other jurisdictions in terms of prices going up big time. What, take me back, say, even the last 12 months, 12 to 18 months in Sarnia Lambton. What have we seen in terms of the market, in terms of the pricing? Pricing keeps going up in Sarnia Lambton. Uh, things keep moving forward. You know, anyone that's from Sarnia is like, wow, the prices here are absolutely crazy. And, you know, if we look back, though, like since I've been in real estate 15 years, like when I started real estate 15 years ago, Terry, the average house price is only 185000 in Sarnia Lambton. And we fast forward to today, um, you know, the average house price is sitting around like 310, 320,000. So really what I'm seeing is in the last year, prices keep going up, they keep going up right now. And I don't think there's too much room for them really to drop here in Sarnia and to compared to some other areas. And I guess that's the thing. We know a lot of people in Sarnia sort of only know what goes on in Sarnia. Do you find sometimes those prices are getting pushed because if people are wanting to move into this area, real estate seems to be pretty cheap compared to a London or if someone maybe was working in Toronto and decides to uh, come back to this region, I've got to think that's where it's really appealing. 100%. And what we're seeing is a lot of people like in the GTA area retire early or come to Sarnia. We're seeing some people where kids have moved here, they have grandkids, now mom and dad are coming this way as well because it's affordable, it's a great place to live, and, and so they could all be together. Before we let you go, I know uh, you've got a busy family. I've got to think it's been uh, interesting times, probably de doing even more work from home right now with the, the virtual things and that gives you a little extra family time, especially with the young ones. Yeah, there's, there's pros and cons with that. I'm at the office right now. Uh, so there's no screaming children in the background or anything, but we're making do, we're making the best of it, and the warm weather's coming, which is great. Well, Sean, we appreciate the update. Uh, all to you and the family, stay safe, all the best, and we'll catch up to you again soon. Thanks, Gary. Have a great day. There's Sean Ryan from eXp Realty joining us here. More to come on Sarnia Lampton Daily on your TV. Welcome back. Well, this is Mental Health Week, and we know many people are dealing with challenges throughout the pandemic. This includes relationships, as people are being forced to spend a little bit more time together than they were used to. In this segment, we get some advice on how to manage the situation. Hey everyone, it's Justin the Therapist again. I am a registered psychotherapist working with individuals, couples, and families. And today I'm back to talk about the quarantine and relationships and how to be okay with your partner, spouse, at home, given all of these restrictions. So let's talk about relationships. So couples often come to me and say, Justin, help us. Our marriage is falling apart. Our relationship's falling apart. We're all over the place. We're, we're stuck at home together, stepping on each other's toes, and we're both really irritated. And it feels like our marriage shouldn't have even happened or we're just going to get divorced help us justin you're our only hope and for those couples i feel like you know what i don't necessarily think that your relationship was doomed from the first place and that it, you shouldn't have been married in the first place i think that it's just that the world is upside down we're experiencing a pandemic and we're forced to be at home and this is an environment that isn't necessarily the way your relationship started out to be so what can be done? Here's what I think. The problem is this. Think of it this way. It's kind of like, um, let's say you're having a date night with your partner and you get the finest cut of steak. And at the same time, uh, you also make amazing roasted potatoes with, again, the best spices and it smells so good out of the oven and you can't wait to eat it. So you got the steak, the roasted potatoes, and you're about to eat it, but then your partner says, wait, let's put it in the blender and then eat it. So you put it in the blender, and then you take it out, and now you have this mush of steak and potatoes. 
and it's still hot. And are you going to tell me that if you eat that, it's going to taste just as good if you had them separate but together? Of course not. I mean, maybe if you're an infant, it'll blow your mind, but we all know that it tastes so much better if you can savor the steak separately and the potatoes separately, but together in the same meal. That's exactly what your relationship should be like, separate, but together. It's important to be able to savor time alone or time for work and savor time with your partner separately while also being together. So I'm going to give you three tools to be able to spend time together and also spend time apart. This is how it should be done. The first thing is you need to be intentional with creating boundaries around space. So if you work from home, for example, it's very important that you have space just for work and space for things not for work, space with your partner, space without your partner. Ideally, if you're working from home, you have a room or, or a corner that can be designated for like a home office. Uh, and when you're in this space, you're just working. And when you are in this space, you're not doing anything else. You're not engaging with your partner. You're not engaging with a family. You're not having fun. Well, hopefully you're having fun at work, but you're not engaging in entertainment, that kind of thing. But when you're outside, when you're in a different environment, different room or whatever it is, you then are not doing anything that has to do with work. You are just being intentional and engaging with your partner, engaging with your family, whatever it might be. And, and it's separate, but together. You're savoring the time apart. You're savoring the time together. But I hear you. A lot of us don't have a bunch of extra rooms lying around for us to have a home office. Many of us live in smaller homes or in, even in apartments, and it can be really tough to have an entire room just for work, especially if with your partner, they also work from home. Um, that means two extra office rooms. So if you can't be intentional with having a boundary for space, then at least you can be intentional having a boundary with time. So if you, for example, have to work uh, in the living room or work in the bedroom or work in the kitchen, then make sure that there is time designated just for work and time for whatever else it might be. So if you're in the bedroom working, you have time that from this time to this time, it's just rest and relaxation time. And from this time to this time, it's work time. And make it a sacred thing. Try not to mix it. And if you do happen to need a break, take a break, but make it a very boundaried time. Not like a whole mix and uh, blend of like work slash entertainment slash hanging out with my spouse or partner. Make it boundaried. Keep those boundaries so you can savor time working and time with your spouse and time relaxing. Now, even if you can't, um, even if you know, you even if you're not working from home, or even if space is not really an issue. The key to making this quarantine really successful for your relationship is being intentional with the boundaries around your energy. So that's the third thing, energy. First is space, second is time, third is energy. So it's so important to be intentional with your energy. And this applies to even when the world goes back to normal and you work outside of home. Our cups can get really empty through work or through life or stresses, or especially through the pandemic. And when couples come to me, they'll say that we are not getting enough quality time together. Often it's one partner that is complaining about that. And often they're expecting me to say, okay, well, you just need to schedule quality time. But the missing ingredient to that is that we actually need to also schedule time to refill our own cups. You need to spend time with yourself alone to recharge so that you can then savor the time with your partner. That's going to do it for our show for this Tuesday, May 5th. Happy Cinco de Mayo. For all of us here at your TV, I'm Terry Doyle. Thanks for joining us. We will see you back here tomorrow.